I've always felt different. I've always seen things, but when I tried to express them as a child, I was always told to ignore it. There were people that I didn't know that came to me and said, I have this message that I keep getting that I have to deliver to you. All of a sudden, out of the shadows, a homeless man just jumped right in front of me, and he said, I'm a soul just like you. I love it. I wanted to understand the universe and who and what we are and what are we doing here. Well, we're all part of this amazing soul wave tapping into each other. This was a major life changer. You are a light. You have helped me a ton. Thank you. You've given me the courage to live more from my soul. Millions of people are awakening. So wake up with Michelle Miche. Be pleased to hear the best-selling authors and experts in the fields of cutting-edge self-help, personal growth, metaphysics, and spirituality. The soul path of awakening. Understand what living awake is. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. All right, if you're new to this podcast, welcome. Hi, everyone in the chat that's getting in here. Um, So, yeah, taking calls. If you have a question, comment, or want a reading, that number is 347-539-5122. If you want to just listen by phone, 347-539-5122 is the number, and press 1 on your keypad. Um, if you can let me know. In, hi, Jackie. I'm getting in the chat. Um, how my sound is, that would be great. Okay. Woo! I am just... Uh, resetting right now. Kind of, how's everybody doing? Oh, thank you, Jackie. Thank you. So, um, I want to hear from all of you. So, please do call in 347 539 5122. Press one on the keypad in the chat. You can let me know how you're doing, also. Uh, want to just run through, I'm going to say this every time because I'm really wanting to ca- have more, I want to connect with more people and I want more people to connect with the people that I'm connecting with. So a couple ways to connect more, Soul Insights and Tarot on YouTube. Um, Also the Awakenings with Michelle Mache podcast on YouTube. I promise we are going there soon. It's just taking, as everything, it always takes a little bit longer than what I envision. Uh, So I'd love it if you would come to hang out, uh, Soul Insights and Tarot on YouTube, and then also Awakenings podcast, uh, you know, Awakenings with Michelle Mache. I put my name in there again. That way people can know, is this the right Awakenings? Because Awakenings is actually an amazing uh, EDM, electric dance music, um, which I love dancing, um, group. <laughs> so <laughs> it's funny because on the Awakenings page on a uh, group on Facebook, a lot of times we'll get people posting um, some great beats, you know, uh, which is fine with me, but I, they may think it's the other awakening. I don't know, whatever. And also, if you want to do, do a deeper dive into metaphysics, uh, spiritualism, uh, esoteric principles and teachings, astrology, divination, all of that, meditation, mindfulness, emotional clearing, Everything that I do, on, but on a deeper level, we go deeper into the Patreon community, especially the Soul Path Traveler uh, tier and Soul Path Journey or tier. The Soul Path Journey or tier, we meet once a month. And we've been studying all about the soul and separating out the lower dimensional aspects of our being and understanding how to relate to that and looking at what we're doing here um, as other deeper dives, and I do give information, sometimes readings, but a lot of times information from the oversouls and the guides. I do believe in the description of this podcast, all the links are there, or you can go to Instagram, which is another way to connect with me. So if you want to come connect with me on Instagram, that would be great. In my bio on Instagram, I do have the links to Patreon and also the Soul Centered Living online study course program, community, um, you can find out more information on that. And then also the flow code. If you, There's a lot of ways to connect and a lot of resources, um, nominal fee or free on my website, uh, soulplayground.life. So, all right, for those of you that are new or just wanting more resources, I love sharing the re- resources with all of you. Um, Yes, Jackie, Patreon this Saturday. Yes, I hope you can make it. Um, 
All right, gang, 347-539-5122. Press one on the keypad. Yay, yeah, yay is right, uh, Jacqueline. I'm really looking forward to this Patreon. There's so much, so many, so much energy shifting preparing really for mid-2024, 2025. A lot. Of, that's another thing we do on Patreon. Is I really give a heads up and how to prepare for these energetic shifts and where we're going for the larger changes beyond what happened in the in 2020. We have larger changes, far-reaching changes that are coming up, and part of that is, which I hope a lot of you are getting into, is your own self-expression and bumping that up from the ego into soul expression. And that's what I teach. If you really want to learn how to do that, soul-centered living is, is the way to go. And again, there's a link on Instagram. Um, I don't think there's a link on my website because we couldn't link it to that. But anyway, I think on, on Instagram there is a soul-centered living link. I'll probably put it at the bottom in the description box as well. Um because, you know, it, this is unprecedented times. It really is. Um, just writing myself a little note to put the epi- in episode description. So, yeah, it is a time to really step more into your soul gifts and understanding yourself as a soul, to beginning to separate out from the, the ego aspect of being or the constructed self, right? And... Really coming into that psychic, telepathic aspect of being. Uh, That's one of the best ways that I can put it. We're really changing how we navigate through life. And it has a lot to do with spirit, spirituality. I would actually say spiritualism. And tapping into these uh, higher frequency gifts and living more and more from that and attracting from that. And I can definitely say it happened. I mean, I had such, I hope everyone's 4th of July, those of you that celebrate it, was amazing. Uh, I had a lot of just fun with people and friends and new people that I met and new friends. Um, But just lovely people wherever, you know, the social gatherings that I went to, just amazing uh, location. All of them are on the beach or near the beach or overlooking the ocean. Um, I'm in Southern California, so this is all in, in Malibu. Um, but just amazing. And the 3rd, you know, July 3rd, went to a great, amazing party with great food and dancing. And, you know, I love dancing, uh, many of you. that um, So I got to dance for a few hours. <laughs> it was just amazing. And But the flow. And so I'm really hoping and I want to help everyone connect into their own flow and understand their personal flow so that you don't have to people please. You don't have to react from conditioning, from condition response patterns, from patterning that's been passed on to you. Because the more that you can align to the truth of who you are and how you express and experience uh, life truly on a soul level, you will get more authentic, more more meaningful connections and experiences. Let's just put it that way. So, yeah, I had a, an amazing time. And um, a lot of little chill places, too, where I went just to chill, to meditate. One place I was at, I just was a stretching. Uh, yeah, just <laughs> laying down and stretching in, in the sun and just off to myself. And that's what I love, where I can just be myself. So I'm hoping you all are finding more and more places where you can just be yourself, your true self, and and, and continually find that those true parts of you, right? Those true, the true self, you know, that is now wanting to emerge. Going to get to callers three four seven five three nine five one two two. Press one on the keypad. Um, Teresa in the chat, I love it. Not able to make Patreon. Will miss you, Teresa. Definitely miss your presence as I will be in transit for work and or yay. That you got it. And that was part of my prediction. I'm so happy for you. Yay. That is amazing. Very happy for you. Yeah, there's a lot of newness. If you kind of follow your path right now. Uh, we'll miss you because you add so much, Teresa. So we will miss you. Um, yeah. 
but they're recorded. So anyway, you'll be able to listen to the replay. So they're rec recorded. And I got a lot of, I'm going to share just a little bit, and then I'm going to get to callers. But yeah, there is a, right now we have some amazing, because I read the energies as a conscious and trance channel, so I'm reading the energies, and then I also look at the astrology after I've looked at the energies. To, so the astrology breaks it down a bit. I can just say right now it's, okay, a couple things. Reinforce what you have going on. Prepare for changes. Where do you need to prepare? If you're feeling pressured, like I have to make this big change, unless it's an emergency or something like that, see where you can shore up better, where you can have more um, of a, a sense of stability or if a new direction is coming in, what are the, what are the tweaks that you need to do, right? What are the little adjustments that you need to do in a particular area of your life. And one thing that can be very helpful, and I'll probably, I don't know if I did this in Patreon, but um, is to put out a, or, or just on a piece of paper and put your name in the center or, or sun or something that represents you, just a big piece of paper chalkboard, whiteboard, whatever, or butcher paper, but, you know, it could be a small paper too, like copy paper, whatever. And then put um, mental, emotional, spiritual, I put spiritual at the top, spiritual, mental at the top. You're going to make this pie, and then you're going to have these sections, mental, emotional, spiritual, physical, and material. Material is your material possessions, but they're all aspects of you. Everything reflects you. So you want to look around what's not really reflecting me and either sell it, get rid of it, do what you can. This is like an adjustment time. And with this, you know, the nodes going into North Node and Aries, South Node and Libra, it's bringing in a lot about ourselves. And are we people pleasing? Are we holding ourselves back? Are we only seeing ourselves in a supportive or subordinate position? Um, relationships of all kinds are highlighted, and especially for the next, I think it's almost almost three months, two and a half maybe, of Venus and Leo retrograde, it is asking us not only to renew and review about relationships and people in our life or coming back in our life. A lot of you may have people that you haven't talked to in a long time come back into your life, whether romantically or platonically or soul, soulmate, kindred you know, spirit, but it's all showing where you were, what you were doing, and where you are now. And so it's this, it really is this time to kind of look. I look at it sometimes like packing. You know, you pack when you're going away, going on a holiday or going on a trip. And then a lot of times you look and you repack and you go, well, I don't really need to bring that. Or you get new information. Oh, it's really hot here. And you're like, oh, I better bring some short sleeves or sleeveless or tanks. Or, oh, it's really it's hot here in the day, but it's really cold at night. It's, oh, I better put in that, you know, fleece. I better put in a sweatshirt or I better put in a jacket or whatever it is, you know. Oh, we're going to be going out a lot. We're going to be, oh, I better put throw in this, throw in that, take this out, you know. Oh, there's a lot of mosquitoes where we're going. We're going to also go hiking and camping. Oh, I better bring, you know what I'm saying? So right now, everyone needs to kind of be doing that in their life and, because you're getting the heads up. You are getting the heads up. Everyone is. You're getting the heads up psychically from your soul, you know, from through the higher self. You're getting the messages of what do you need to do in the moment? What do you have going on? What is, what is in the present moment? What needs your attention? But what is starting to come in for you? And that's something that you want to move more into, you know, really law of, aligning to the, the resonance, um, activating the law of magnetic attraction, not necessarily you activating it, you know, because we attract all the time. So it's not a big deal if you know about the law of attraction. It's really not. It's because you're attracting, you have to look and see, am I attracting what I want? Am I attracting at the vibrational frequency and out picturing of what I want? And the only way to do that is to look at what you're drawing in and, and change your resonance. You have to start to change. It doesn't always happen quickly or overnight by what you ingest, by what you eat, by what you take in media-wise, you know, 
TV, movie, what are you looking at? What are you thinking? You know, so right now there's this adjustment period with our values. What do we value? How do we how do we show value? How do we receive value that we're, you know, how do we get acknowledged and validated? How do we validate ourselves and others? So there's going to be the next, I would say, two, two and a half years, this whole juxtaposition of jockeying that, the other and you, your personal individual life, your soul path. Everybody has an individual path, soul path. It doesn't matter if you're married or you have children. You have your own path. And whether you're married or partnered or you work in a business or have a business with someone else or you have children, they're not your path. Be very clear that having children is not your path. It's what brings up, what comes up by having children that reflects what's on your path. So we all still have an individual path no matter what we're also doing externally. And so that's why I find out, I find parsing it out, looking at how am I doing mentally? What do I need mentally to, to be aligned and to be healthy, you know? to be in a good flow? What do I need emotionally? What do I need spiritually? What do I need? Fine. Material is also financial. And then you've got the physical. What does your body need? What do you need physically, your physicality? And so when you start looking at all that with, with tenderness and love, you can just say, okay, I can adjust over here or I can set these kinds of boundaries with this person or with my children. I can have the boundaries like like. And then my clients will say, oh, I have so much to do. I have nothing, no time for myself. And they'll have teenagers. I'm like, well, what are the teenagers? Oh, you know how they are. And I'm like, no. How, what are they, are they? They can put the dishes in the dishwasher or do whatever. They can help. And that's only going to help them, you know, exceed and, and succeed in life, you know, um, exceed their present thought process about themselves. So just be, just know that right now there is a lot of getting clearer on what you want, what you need, what you truly need, what you value, how you value, how you love and what you love. This is going to bring, for some it could be dissolving of relationships, uh, marriages. You could see that, oh, I've outgrown this person or they're outgrown or I'm, you know, I, I want something different or a reevaluating. That would be another thing that I suggest in relationship right now. Is, is, especially if you've been with someone, either if you've been with someone for a long time, chronologically, or if you've done a lot of changing, or you perceive they have, it's just to get together and say, hey, what do we now need in one? What is your individual focus? Because all of this with the Venus and Leo retrograde, is it, Leo's the sun. It's about us. It's the solar aspect of us, right? So it's to sit down and go, hey, what do you individually need? And, and okay, listen, and, and and this is what I individually need. Okay, how can we support each other? You know, you may have a partner, significant other, spouse, let's say that's going back to training or going back to school or starting something new. They may say, oh, you know what I really need is an extra hour a night or two hours or two hours on the weekend to study or study for this training or for this exam or to prepare or to work on this startup that I'm doing or this pro, this business. Oh, okay, okay. And then one says, oh, okay, I'm, I'm doing more yoga and I'm really enjoying that. I need an hour in the morning, an extra hour or whatever it is. Do you see what I'm saying? So to be able to come in and negotiate, renegotiate. Right now it's the time to renegotiate your life. Some of you might even be doing it with spirit, with God, with all that is. Or you're turning, tuning into your higher self and saying, okay, how can the little me, the avatar me, respond more to the higher self and create and adjust my life or parts of my life to be more soul aligned. See where I'm getting with this people? So this is the time to do it because if you do, then you're going to meet those openings and opportunities that are coming up that your that your soul is directing you to through your higher self. Or the higher self is the navigational system of the soul. So as your soul is shifting right? The, the different parts of you, or, or maybe for some of you, it's a, a different aspect of you that's really starting to come through strongly and wants more self-expression. And, and once, you know, there's some new opportunities and openings and new directions or new ways of expressing yourself, this is the time to consciously prepare 
So it doesn't have to be a tragedy. It doesn't have to be through some kind of tragedy or drama. You're consciously understanding your energetic patterning and consciously aligning to it to to that which is emerging through you as you. That's the whole idea, is these new aspects. I love, I love, I love, I think it was, oh gosh, what's his name? Jo- was it Joseph Campbell that said this? It, it, it's just funny because I've been saying for years to my clients, look, if you we don't know our true path. If, if you have everything mapped out, then it's not your path. And that's what I would, I'm constantly telling my clients. I'm like, you don't know what it is because it's emerging through you as you. It's a newly emerging. That means we, that's part of the mystery. We go along in life and then something new starts coming through, a new idea, a new interest, a new way of being. And it's to connect to that part and help usher that in or birth it in, Right. And then you start reading the signs and it unfolds. I had seen a quote just a month or so ago, I guess, that I guess that really validates my understanding of the soul path of what I just shared with you. I think it was Joseph Campbell. Some of you know, put it in the chat or call in when you call in. Anyway, the the quote was, I don't remember it exactly, but the quote was something to the effect that if you know your path, it's not your path, it's someone else's that you see. You know, if you know everything about it or something, I don't know. But, and then the then it went on to talk about that we can see others' path, but ours is, you know, my interpretation was this unfolding. So to me, it validated what I knew from my own, traveling my own soul path and working with so many people, hundreds and thousands of people over the years, um, in different capacities that, I mean, I wish I knew all of my path. I know highlights, I know certain things, but for it to be my path, it, it's coming through me. And then I align to the resonance, the energy of what's coming through me, and then it starts manifesting physically. That's the key, people. If anybody is telling you, you can, you, yeah, you can do a vision board, you can, I've done that, I did a dream book, you can do all of that, the visioning. But it's not going to all come through, and it's not going to come through in the way. And the best way to manifest what you really want is to align to the energies that are nudging you and prompting you. All right, gang, let's get to callers, 347-539-5122. If you don't have sound in the chat, I would suggest uh, maybe refreshing your browser or reboot. All right, let's get to callers. Let's get to the first one here. I'm going to try to go quickly because we've got a lot of people calling in, and I want to hear from everyone. Hi, welcome. Hi, thank you for taking my call. My name is uh, Melvin, calling from Georgia. And hey, I just Melvin, have a welcome. Question. Hi, mm-hmm. thank you so much. Uh, I just wanted to uh, ask you about a friend of mine that I'm interested in, and I just want to know she says she is, but how she really feel about me. Her name is Cassandra. Cassandra, okay. And she worked at this dialysis center. Okay. She well, takes, I do feel... She what now? I do feel there's interest there. Are you guys kind of just hanging out more as friends right now? No, we haven't even gotten to that level yet. She did give me her phone number, but she had got a new phone, and I keep asking her about the number. Do you see her going to give me her new number? Well, do you walk together, work together or something? Because I do see you seeing her. I kind of think, yeah. let's see, what's coming up for Melvin and Cassandra? Where, where do you see her? At dialysis. I have to go to dialysis. And she, she didn't oh. want to put me on the machine. Yeah, and okay. we just had connection. And uh, but they moved her away from me. I don't know why they did that today, but... Do you see her, like, you know, uh, giving me her number again and a new number? And we going out, hanging out? Yeah, I do. I would just keep it light because I'm not sure. Is she, there's some kind of little issue. About, is it a boundary issue? Does she work there? or she? Cause yes, ma'am. She it does... is a boundary issue. Yes, ma'am. Okay. But she had gave me her number before, but... She's going to be, she said that she's going to be leaving that facility and going to another one. 
on the 15th, and I told him, please don't go. You're very good uh, caviar with tech. And do you see her going to another No, I do. Facility? Yeah, I do see her going. And, and this is why I'm saying, Melvin, it feels like she wants to connect or wanted to connect, but now it's not sure because it seems there's a boundary issue because she works there. So yeah, I would, she won't be there anymore, though. Well, so you may have a chance. I don't know. She's a little wiggly with it. That's the best way I can say. Like, part of her is like, maybe I should keep in touch or we can keep in touch. And then another part is like, oh, it's a boundary issue. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have. I think she talked to somebody, a friend, and they're like, oh, sh should you do that? Yeah. So I wouldn't ask her to stay. I would just say, look, if you if if you are leaving um, – Please, you know, give me your number, however you say it, and guys speak. Just, give, you know, yeah. give me your number, and we can keep in contact. I would just leave it at that because she's a little up in the air as to mm -hmm. had she should should she have given you her number in the first place. She's not yeah, sure because, she should have. Yeah, she she didn't supposed to, but she she did it. But and also, I tried the uh, uh, the apartment complex I say live at. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's real nice, and I gave her an application. Do you see her moving out here? That I don't know. I'd have to tune in more, but what I can tell you right now is just mm -hmm. be open, but I wouldn't have too firm expectation because she's not certain she should have given you the number in the first place. That's what I'm getting because of the boundary issue. That's for a quick read, yeah. that's what I'm just getting. But you can just yeah. say, look. And I told you I wasn't going to tell nobody. And I haven't. I haven't right, told anybody. Second, yeah, that's okay, but she's second-guessing it. All right, Melvin, keep okay. listening. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Hi, you're on air. Hi, you're on air. Hi, it's Jacqueline. Hey, Hello. Hey, hi. Hi. Hello. Can you hear me? Good. Hi. Yes, it was weird. You said hi, and then it unmuted after. But anyway, um, oh. <laughs> I just I had a quick thing. It actually happened earlier this morning, and I was like, oh, I should call in and ask Michelle. I was sitting outside, and this moth, I felt something on me like Ooh. a bug, and I kept kind of hitting at it. And this moth was circling my legs, would not leave me alone, then went, went into my face. And I was like, whoa, buddy. <laughs> It just wouldn't, like, leave me alone. I'm like, all right, what is this trying to tell me here? So well, moths I have a lot to do. Go ahead. Go ahead. What is your? No, because I, I Googled it, but I was like, you know what? Michelle is better than Google. So. Oh! <laughs> I should have my own chat GPT. That's right. Um, okay. It, two things. I don't know if what it said in the, you know, what you were reading, but moths have a yeah. lot to do with um, intuition. Oh. And, fo and following your own inner light, your own inner knowing. So either right oh, okay. now or something is coming up, maybe you have a hunch about something. Um, mm -hmm. it, but moths, moths lead through intuition because they follow the okay. light, right? So this is like yeah. how do you access your own personal truth? Uh, now, sometimes mm -hmm. moths, because like butterflies, they they sleep it and you know fly around so you want to mm -hmm. check in and see oh am i being am i am i too scattered or do i do i need uh -huh. to organize uh something that would be another thing to look at is do i need okay. to organize something um yeah. or am right is that a possibility mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah so it's asking you to or organize something and also to trust your own inner knowing so again, okay. connection, connecting to your truth through intuition, and it's different okay. than always thinking about something. Moth isn't saying think about your truth or what's your truth. It's like trust your intuition, your gut, knowing what you're sensing to connect into your inner truth, right? Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Cool. I will do and that. We'll Thank you. <laughs> See you Saturday at Patreon. I'm yes. still looking for I feel yes. like it's been every t the last few times I, I feel know. like it's been like so much really has long happened time. or something. Yeah. Right? It feels like yeah. a really long time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Oh, All right. Saturday. Yes, okay. Saturday. Thanks Bye. for calling in. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Bye.
Do that better. Okay. Hi, you're on air. It's me again. Oh, <laughs> was that you, Jacqueline? Right there. Oops. They unmuted oh, me again. Okay. Yes. Yep. Okay. Bye. <laughs> bye. Okay. Hold on. I'm about to say you're on air, but let's see. No, that is Jacqueline. Oh my again. God. We can't. <laughs> can't get the second that we're connected. Okay. Hi, you're on air. Four one five. Okay, I'll come back. Some of you, if you've moved away from the phone, I'll come back to you, 415. Let's see. Hi, you're on air. Hey, Michelle, it's hello. Owen. Hey, Owen, hello. Hey. Um, I was wondering if you – I was just listening to your show from a couple of weeks ago, the numerology. I was wondering if you could do a quick um, numerology oh, give me a book. reading. Okay, give me a uh, date. Sure. It's 12187. Okay, well, look at the cycle you're in right now. It's a 12 1, right? Yep. Okay. All right, so there's something about new. Okay, your cycle will shift. Um, in in July. Well, actually, uh, not July. Sorry, uh, December. With that twelve one, mm-hmm. because we go birthday to birthday, but it's not immediate. So you might notice something a month or two before shifting, even a little bit before for you. I feel like October, November, but mm-hmm. a, a imperceptible change, and then going into I would say January, February on, you'll be putting more action to it. So definitely, what I get with you is time for uh, new directions, creativity. Uh, to focus mm-hmm. on your creative aspect of you, your self-expression. What can you do more creatively or how can you tap into your creativity more and or maybe projects? I feel for you on a soul level, and even if it doesn't start happening until, you know, next year, into this year, into next year, um, there is something that you want to create or birth that is yours. So it may not be yeah. work. It, even if you're working for someone else, you need to do something more for yourself, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, it does. Um, let me see. Oh, yeah, I just did your 9, 10. Okay, your... Um, so next year is going to be very powerful for you because you come in as a, a 2, if you had 1987 mm-hmm. plus 13, it distills to a two. So there is a lot with relationship or working one-on-one even with somebody, working more one-on-one or wanting to connect. Now, that that, that could be that you even, if you're working with groups or doing something in a group fashion, your people will feel the connection like, oh, he really connected with me or I felt he was talking to me or singing to me or something like to me. So you have that gift. But I do feel it's more about you right now. And you may find kind of mid-summer on that you're around new people or something new is in your new person or new influence in your environment or you're in a new environment. And I almost feel like your higher self is guiding you to a new environment, if that makes sense, by this cycle that you're in. Does that make like sense? Like a move or just, or just like a, in general? It could be, it doesn't matter. It could, if you can't move or not wanting to move or not able to move, it would be that you need to go to some new places. You're, you're, you mm. need to open up to new influences to get positively triggered or inspired for to believe yeah. in not only in yourself, but to, be, to believe in what it is that you want to do or what you want to create. Right? Okay. Yeah, It's not happening yeah. where you're at. There's something stagnant. There's something lagging about the environment that you're at. So you're going to have to yeah. go outside and get other uh, other influences or people, whether you have to drive or travel or walk, or, it doesn't matter. You, just, you need to get new influences in. And that doesn't mean that it always has to be people that you're high talking to. It's just you need to be in the energy field of these other influences, new influences or or, or people that are – vibing where you want to be or what you want to do or have more resonance to you. 
Well, okay. see, that's that the thing, people, yeah. so, right, oh, for Owen and the other people that are listening. When you, I say psychically when I see somebody needs new influences, it doesn't always mean that you have to have a new person in your life. You may, but it may be just going somewhere because we all are interconnected, and so we feel that resonance or those, those key codes that the people have within them. So even just going, that's why people visit museums you know, artists, because they they're they not talking to Rembrandt, obviously, or Picasso, or, right? <laughs> it's like, but you're getting their vibe. You're getting the, the, their vibe. There's a transmission. You're getting that vibe. Or the, or the, you know, or the guy that plays guitar that goes to his, the, you know, the singer-songwriter um, playing, they get that vibe, that transmission. So it's easier to make changes where you want to go where you go to get that transmission. Right. Okay, great. That makes perfect okay. sense. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Okay, where are we here? Hi, you're on air. Oh, hi, Michelle. This is Don in California. How are you? Don, hey, Don. Welcome. Welcome, thank welcome. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, um, I'm on housing because I'm low income. and. Um, uh-huh. Section A, and I have an appointment July 11th. There were some concerns, but do you, do you think, am I going to pass it for another year? Will I get it for another year? Yeah, I feel like there's something that you, that they have these kinds of, um, yeah, there it is about the housing. It, it's just a regular check-in, right? That's what I'm getting. Well, yeah, you have to show your bank accounts for the last, you know, yeah. your bank every month yeah. for the last six months and, and things like that. I did make money last year because I was gambling and I made money, but I told them about it. But um, a couple of years ago, they said I couldn't gamble, but I did. But I told them that I won and I passed last year. So mm-hmm. I'm just kind of worried about that a little bit. They, how, I guess they would know, when you gamble, does it go to your Social Security mm-hmm. card? Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. That's government. I mean, yeah, I got a letter from Social Security too because I didn't report it. I didn't know you had to report it if you made less than sixteen thousand a year, but apparently you do. So I don't know what they're going to do either. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. But I, I, I don't know. I, it's going to would take me a longer read. I don't feel you unhoused. Okay. Like there, you, you might have to figure another way of what you're doing. And good on you for being able to gamble. My God, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. Gives me something to do. It's very close to my house. uh, Saturn. I mean, they may have a talkie about what you can do or not do. Okay. I don't know. But I'm not seeing, I'm seeing more stability or staying there, at at least for the now is what I'm getting. Sounds good. Okay. You take care. Wonderful. Thanks, Michelle. Mm Bye-bye. Hi, you're on air. Oh, hello from Bali. Oh, hey, Zoe from Bali. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, I'm here in Bali right now, and I'm actually here with, like, a few of my friends. We've been doing some really cool um, readings and tune-ins and getting some really awesome downloads. Um, mm. And I and I was wondering uh, what I... What I was wondering, wanting to tap into or asking you to tap into is I, we had this really intense channeling come through today about um, basically like creating like a circle, like a, like a probably not like a healing retreat, probably something like this, but I feel like it starts in like men's circles or women's circles or something like this. And I just wanted to know if you could give us any um Okay. If you see anything or vibe anything around that or, like, any more clarity based on that. Because, yeah, I really, we really are, like, calling in this community and uh, through this healing zone, you know? Yeah, it shows to, to start it and it shows to work foundationally. So what I'm getting with that is not just your foundation. You're just at the beginning stages of creating a good foundation for it. But there is something about either roots or foundation being rooted or and also working with the emotions or emotional body I'm hearing. Um, so it could be very nurturing and healing, maybe massage or energy work or movement. It feels like it's it's something that 
deals with deep, maybe even it's trauma or childhood or um, it has to do with the foundation of people, though, and of yourself, of each of the people that you're working together, but also the foundation. So you're creating this foundation. So maybe it's what you all are doing to create a better foundation for yourself or foundation for your spirituality or foundation of healing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Does, show, does that make sense? So it is saying to go Definitely. towards it. And okay. there's a lot of Scorpio energy around it. So there's definitely depth and healing and transformation would be with so that. Probably that means also our, uh, that probably means also our other friend. We are wondering if he was going to be in a, he's, he's also a, uh, has a lot of Scorpio placements like me as well. We are wondering if he was like, we're like, is he on the bus or off the bus? You know, like we couldn't really figure it he's out. He's wiggly. I would say input. start it with you two. Is it three of you right now? Yeah, there's three of us sitting here right now. Yeah, that's what it is. It's the three of you are the core. So anybody else that you bring in, that'll be a different thing. But I would just say start with the three of you. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, because I really feel this, and I definitely feel like incorporating, yeah, the somatic I want to do, because I've done the course in somatic, but now I actually want to get certified to help other people to do it and just different healing Perfect. modalities. And as I was doing this session uh, for him today, it was this different, I was really vibing this really intense, like a uh, Medicina woman, you know, like um, clearing and calling and uh, using like light language and moving and just different types of smokes and clearing modalities. And we really went through a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot so of things. If, as long as you're, it looks like as long as you're focusing on the body and the foundation, in my sense, a lot of people are healing right now somatically, and I've been talking about, I mean, in the work that I do, we call it somatic healing. It's the soma just means the body, and you're clearing uh, on, a, on a cellular level also, but through the body, it is that to handle the higher vibrational frequencies, the body has to be more addressed and more integrated uh, into this part of awakening. So you're going to see a lot of people do these kinds of modalities, a lot of people needing to understand their um, their body and how to take care of it, how to soothe it, how to connect with it, um, yeah, how to access it for information. So anything that is in alignment with that, I think, will be greatly supported. Uh, Zoe, great to connect with you. I'm going to scoot because we've got a lot of people um, in the queue okay. today. Okay, thank you so All much. Right. Big love. Lots of love. Lots of love and light. Hi, you're on air. Oh, hi, Michelle. It's Jennifer calling. Hi, Jennifer. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I was wondering if you could tune into my dog and see if there's anything that she needs. Um, she's very old right now, and I just noticed that she was peeing and it was a little red this morning. Well, I definitely do feel something going on internally, and there could be, I don't know if it's an infection or something. You're probably going to be taking her to the vet. The one thing I was getting, even before you told me that part, is quiet and something soft. And was there a lot of activity around her recently? Um, we did go on a road trip, and we haven't been on one in a while, so yes. Okay. So that could be. So she's just trying to settle in from that, I feel. There was a lot of extrasensory stuff around her. I would take her to the vet. I'm not getting anything in particular, but either or you're already going to the vet to check something out. But it feels like she's going to have to be healing from something. So I don't know what else is, without doing a scan on her, I don't know what else is going on. But she could be more quiet or you're feeling her lethargic, but I also feel she's resting from the activity, okay, is what I'm getting. Okay, yeah, well, I did take her to the vet, but it didn't really seem to work, so. What did the vet say? No, they they gave me some pills for, they said, oh, it's a bladder infection, but she'd already had one, and they charged me $750, gave me some pills, and it still never went away, so I don't know. I'm not getting anything that psychically to give her other than... um, It may be that it's discovered later then. I don't feel it. I feel it's not bladder. I feel it's something more intestinal is what oh, I'm getting. Oh, okay. All right. 
All right. Yeah. I, okay, I'm that's getting great. more intestinal. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm not getting bladder at all. I'm getting intestinal tract. So, you know, whether there's a little diverticulitis or something she ate or there's something, you know, but anyway, there's that, that's what I'm getting. And um, do you give her rice at all? Have you given her food with rice? No, she, yeah, when we have Eating. leftover rice, she does eat it, yeah. And I've been giving yeah, her cranberries. She, uh, I don't know about that. See, I feel like I'm almost getting like a di- <laughs> She's coming through <laughs> because I'm getting like roughage might be too hard for her right now. So maybe really soft rice mixed with some kind of turkey or beef or something. I don't know about the cranberries. Okay. I, I think that anything that's too cruciferous might be difficult for her digestion. So okay. Yeah. 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 So I'll try do the that right and then, with her. then cook. Yeah. yeah, and then let us know and then yeah. All right, sweetie, big hug. Thank you. Th- thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Goodbye. Hi, you're on air. Hey. It's Jessica from Pennsylvania. Thank you. Hi, Jessica. For taking my call. Hi. Um, Hi. So I am possibly going through something that I went through last year with living. Mm-hmm. Um, my lease is up. Uh, well, the guy let me stay an extra week, so I have like a few more days. And my new place, has, I'm handling it really well. But I, and I know also, I don't know what it play at. Like, well, you really got wiggling in and out, Jessica. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Can okay, hear? now I can hear you now. Better. Yeah, now I'll I stay right here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so actually, I'll just leave it vague. What do you see me with doing with this uh, living situation in the next couple of days? Do you see me going straight into my home, or like where do you see me going? Okay, let's go. Now, have you already because pa- I do see packing, I see boxes, so I definitely yeah. I'm see actually in my storage movies. unit right now. Uh, I'm actually messing no around with my storage <laughs> unit. Yeah. Oh, okay, because I'm remote viewing and I see all these boxes around you. Okay, so. There seems to be a bit of a delay. What is that? Mm-hmm. Is a week or two? There's a yeah, delay. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. What is that's what what is what what what's the well, delay? Well, the guy let me stay an extra week where I'm where I've been renting. I don't. I might have to ask him again to stay another week, or I need to find something else before I uh, my house. Like I may have found my house, but I I can't see it till Friday, and it's not available. Oh, oh yeah, that's why I see the delay. Yeah, I feel like you're going to have to ask because I don't see. Yeah, yeah, I see the boxes there. I eventually see movers, but right now I just see all the boxes, which confirms you're in the storage unit, and I think you're going to have to stay later. There's a delay in getting the place. Well, but his granddaughter is, like, supposedly moving in. I don't know exactly when she's moving in this month, but do you see anything around that? I just see that you're going to have to ask somebody. It just shows that there's a delay. The particulars I can't really get into right now because it's a quick read, but it does show there's a delay in you moving. I don't see you... You know, I see the boxes. I eventually do see movers picking boxes and you're in a house. But so th- that just would tell me common sense that you are going to find, a, you know, you're going to have a place to uh, stay longer. Um, yeah. I wouldn't worry about that. I mean, just talk to Do him. you see me suffering in between? <laughs> because I need to find the place in between. Well, that's, that's. I can't answer that. Suffering, you know, what one person suffers, another person it doesn't suffer. You know what I mean? Suffering is relative. But it is going to yeah, be a I bit of a juggle. There's a, de- there's a delay. There's a delay in you finding the place and moving in. But I do see you finally moving in. Uh, and there's a lot of light coming in. I got to go because if I stay talking, I can't get out of the energetic field. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm so you're very open, which I it's so beautiful. Thank you for calling but you're going to find a place and you're going to like it. It's just getting in between, getting from there to finally, because I see when you're there, you're like, oh, you're exhausted. It's going to, I don't know if it's because you have a lot of stuff to move or just moving is exhausting, but you're going to be like, you know, exhausted. But you're going to like where you go. All right, sweetie, big hug. Bye. Yeah. Mm, thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, you're on air. 
Hello, Your Honor. Hi. Hello. Hi. You're welcome. What's your question? Who am I speaking with and what's your question? My name is Christine. Your um, name is, uh, can, can you say Christine? Yes. Okay. Hi, Christine. What's your question? Hi, I was just wondering about my career finances. That's two questions. What's your What's your question? What's your which, Oh, your my career. Ask? Okay. And what about it? It's in flux. So is your business. So I guess you're right. The two are tied together for you. Um, you're going through some kind of fluctuation or change, either in and in, in career and or in finance. Uh, with your monetary situation, you're, I feel there's just either going to be restructuring or you're going to be moving on to more of something that you really love or want to do. Um, but it, there's balancing. So if, there, if money is coming in and then going out right away or it's a little up and a little down, that's the cycle that you're in. Mm-hmm. So, so it's you're set, you're, this is about setting long-term goals for you and putting in a plan to achieve something in a project or consulting or career or project base. But I definitely feel something new is coming in for you, okay? Or if you recently did the change, you have to build it up. So there's gonna, there is going to be fluctuations in finance for a little bit before the increase comes in. Just have patience okay. and keep to the path. Yeah, have patience and keep to the path, okay? Okay, I had applied for a job, and I'm just uh, curious if that's going to come through. I don't know. You asked about your career. There's fluctuations. I think you're not – I think you have to – I think you need to do some evaluating as to really what you want to do and what your goal Mm -hmm. is career-wise. And I feel once you do that, then financially you're going to do a lot better. Okay? That's the best I could tell you. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, waiting for our guestie. Hi, you're on air. Hi, Michelle, Valerie. Hey, Valerie. Hi. Hi. Um, Are you seeing an increase in finances some kind of way? I don't know what kind of way. (laughs) Well... Yeah, if you put energy to it. You know, this is for Valerie, for you, Christine that just called, and everybody else that's listening. Right now there can be a lot, but people are going to have to make take a risk. Right now you can increase, okay. especially if you're doing something on the side, more mm-hmm. project-based, um, even sales right now, selling things, you know, um, workshops, classes you know, small articles, things that inspire people, things that help people. But right now it's a really good time for entrepreneurs or anybody that feels creatively inspired. So I would say similar to what I shared with Christine is is putting a plan, having an idea and just putting a plan together, certain steps of what it is that you want to do. Now, I will share with you, Valerie, as well as other people that are listening, it may not be the end all be all right now because we're in a re- reevaluating and refinement phase. So if you start something, it's most, it may, for many people, I would say between October, November, or the beginning of the year, depending on where you are in the cycle, it could change, greatly change, or there could be an adjustment to what you're doing. But the thing is right now is to just start it and then start refining. You know, how do I like this? How is this paying off? Where, where, where's the potential of this? What I would say for you, Valerie, is just to start, okay? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out where, where do I start? I mean, with what you enjoy, online? with what you want. Okay. Yeah, online would be good. See, that this is the thing, to engage the soul, it has to be something that you're kind of interested in because it's also about our path of unfolding, right? So... Once we start checking something out or researching something or playing around with something, that starts engaging our soul that, oh, I like this, I want this, it's more this way. But you have to, because we're on the earth plane, it requires, um, you know, it requires us to do. It requ- it's it's, it's yeah. about effort. So just start mm-hmm. with whatever you're thinking about, just start and see where that goes. Okay? 
Well, what I was thinking about was doing, um, helping out seniors by maybe doing their gardening and things like that. Just at a start. Just start. I'm okay. just saying with the aspects right now, what I see is a conscious and trans channel, the, the big picture is mm-hmm. you may start with something and it may change. So whatever you're feeling right. on an intuitive, a sensory, somatic level, like, oh, I can do this, just mm-hmm. start. See, we're... So okay. many of us, and Valerie, you're bringing up a good point, so many of us in our conditioned responses, we've been conditioned in society to kind of have a formula or like, oh, if I go to school and do this or I start, this is going to be the payoff. That Those days are ending. So it's really like following the signs, the magic dust, the crumbs. It's just unfolding because that soul operates. The ego operates, oh, if I take this course or I do this, or if I help people in this way, then I'm going to make it and I'm going to make this much money. If I go to this school, I'm going to, okay, I get this degree. This is what's going to happen. Those days are ending. So I want everybody to get that in your head, get a clear jump. Even if you go to school, even if you go to uni, even if you get the degree or the certificate, how it plays out is going to be very different, especially if you're listening to this podcast. So Valerie, just start and see where it goes. See what starts at okay. home. That's your message. And keep us posted right. because we want to hear about your journey of your soul's unfolding and your success with this, what you're starting, okay? Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. You're welcome. Lots of love. Yeah, the whole idea, we all got to just start, start it, start it, start it. Okay. Well, all right, gang. Hang on, we've got our awakening conversation coming up. And um, if you did not get your question answered or the reading, you can call back next week. Um, probably usually between here, 12 and, I don't know, 12-ish after the channeling, 12-ish to about D or so, 12 or 1 o'clock. Um, okay, so time for our awakening conversation. We've got Sally Crow on. Her book is Spirit Speaker. A Medium's Guide to Death and Dying. Um, we may be open to questions if it's if it fits in with what we're talking about. So, you know, if you have any interest of what we're talking about, stay on the line, um, and we'll pick up your uh, your call. Hi, Sally. Welcome. Hi. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here today. Great. Me too. So let's um, let's dive in here, Sally. Uh, just give us a little bit what you want to share. I want to say like your first awakening, what you you know awakening to your path, and then what led you or what next level of awakening because we have so many awakenings, big and small, and all types and energies. Yes. Um, and, and then what you know? How did that unfold for you in the beginning, and then where you're at now, uh, especially in regards to your book? Sure. What was that impetus? Yeah. So I am a natural psychic medium who was born into a family uh, with psychic death, and I have been working with my ability to perceive spirit and to perceive the unseen since I was about three. That's when my... um, as my training started unofficially because my great-grandmother was my first teacher and she raised my father, so I just thought of her as my grandmother. But um, my great-grandmother was somebody who people went to see to talk to them about the problems they're having, to look into their future, to talk to their loved ones past, um, and for simple herbal remedies and such. So... Mm-hmm. I've been doing this my whole life. Oops. We've got a bit. So growing up, how did that affect you? What was your awakening, and how did that affect you growing up in this way? Sure. For me, it was really normal. I, you know, I perceived spirit. I talked myself through mirrors when I was a child into other spirits. So when I say I talked to communicated with myself. I mean, I was communicating with future versions of myself, like my adult self. Mm -hmm. When I was a child, my sister, Sandy, is also psychic and only like a year and a half younger than me. So um, I 
was an awakening. It was just normal. I did have a major opening, though. I had been working. Well, that's what I'm uh, talking about, opening. Because even if okay. you're born with this, as I was as well, right. it's just interesting for people to see what kind of opens you up or, you know, and kind of gets sure. you consciously on the path. Yeah, I think people would sure. be interested in that. Well, I've been consciously on the path since I, like, my whole life. I've been reading for the public since I was 18. I'm 52. Um, and I became a, you know, I, I was reading professionally. I was a Reiki master in three schools of Reiki. And um, I also have a background in um, spell work and witchcraft. So by the time I was 30, I had a major opening. My first book, Jump Girl, The Initiation and Art of a Spirit Speaker, was a memoir that was written about my opening, actually, about growing up and then about what I refer to as the November incident. And um, because it started in November, it was much longer than November, but it was pretty intense. And I had a team of five spirits who were actively working with me, teaching me things, um, you know, opening me up. I was having multiple Kundalini openings every day. I was having past, I've had past life memories since I was like three or four years old. But this was a total download of a past life that I had in Egypt and um, so all of this was happening at once, and I started doing sound healing, vocal toning with my voice along with my healing work at that time because I could remember doing it in this other lifetime, and I was like, well, if I could do it then, I must be able to do it now. Um, if I wouldn't have had such a strong partner in my husband, I probably would have been checked into a hospital because it was so intense and half of my first book was pretty much about my opening and what that experience was like so for people who really want real details I would suggest that they go check out my first book Jump Girl just because Mm -hmm. I've had other people comment on how it really is helpful when somebody's having an opening to really see what it can be like um, in detail and much more detail than you can talk about on you know, one interview well, show. What, what, well, what what helped you? Well, this is about conversation. So, what what helped sure. you open? What helped? Um, it's because we get a lot of listeners that a lot of them have been on a path for a long time, and you know, obviously they hear from yeah, and they're working the for what helped them. Um, for me, yeah, or you, or they, I think because they, yeah, they're, they're just be, hearing different people say what how something happened sure. to them or helped them. Mm-hmm. And obviously, if people vibe with the guests. They get the, the book anyway. Some people are probably are buying it. Right. Speak. Yeah, but yeah, just, yeah, I understand. Like, what, um, I yeah, was what a, helped you? Know, I, had, I had started um, really getting into healing and energy work. You know, I had been reading cards for probably about, um, you know, 10 years or a little bit over 10 years for the public by that point. And I had... I had studied Reiki, traditionally Sui Reiki, and then I took, um, well, I actually have my master's in six schools of Reiki now, but at the time I had three. And one of them, Prima Reiki, was all about self-work, you know, as about, so I was, I was doing a lot of healing work on other people because I immediately started doing Reiki on people when I brought that into my life. Um, and I've always been a deep diver seeker. So I think that the big thing was is that I did do a tremendous amount of energy work on myself along with on other mm. people. Um, mm-hmm. And sometimes I would just sit and do Reiki on my third eye or my crown, you know, not just the areas mm-hmm. where, you know, everybody has their own places that are blocked, you know, from emotional stuff. I worked on those places as well. But I specifically worked on my third eye um, with that hope. And as I was saying, I was also practicing magic. Yeah. And you say that, how was it, let's go back to the emotional aspect. How did Mm -hmm. that, what did you do for that part and what seemed to help you? To move through it? Well, I think that anytime we go through an opening, we are, we have to really have a deep examination of ourselves. I referred mm-hmm. to the November incident as being <laughs> scrubbed down with steel wool and sprayed with a fire hose. So it was 
painful, <laughs> um, mm. but also I felt like at the same time that I felt cleaner than I ever had because all the wounding that I had was kind of like flushed out to look at, um, especially because I started communicating with spirits like super loud. I had always had spirit contact, but this was like going from 10 to 100 in a matter of days. And I had to learn to navigate that. So like I said, I did have teachers that were helping me and they actually always told me that this was something that I had planned. So every time that they would like push me to do something or I would have something come up that was overwhelming or a little scary, they would then remind me that this was my plan. And when they would say that, I could feel in my own consciousness that that was the truth. So I could kind of like relax and not be as afraid of it. And I think that's the big thing is I think a lot of people like you got to look at your emotions and it's going to be scary sometimes. Yeah, that's a good point. You got to look at the emotions and yeah, it can be scary, but it's good to have help. I think assistance or guide or, other dimensional, yes, but also on this dimension, yep. teachers can be very helpful. Um, yes, I think as well, right? I mostly uh, did. I did not have a lot of. Um, at one point, <laughs> I did question my own sanity because I had, for me, my open was primarily around my ability as a medium, um, and it was. At one point that I was a little overwhelmed, I did call my Reiki master, and that was the only time he ever had, I've had some, like, comments that from me. Um, but when I greeted him at the door, I said, I just need you to tell me that I'm not crazy, because I'm going to tell you some stuff, and if you tell me you think that I need to go to the hospital, I'm going to go. <laughs> like, um, because, you know, like, I was having, like, full-blown kundalini experiences where I was, you know, like convulsing and, you know, like having uncontrollable shaking and, um, you know, experiencing a roaring of energy moving through my body or white light. I remember at one point feeling like the light coming out of my emanating from my body was so bright that if there wasn't a roof on my house, they'd be able to see me up in the sky. That was kind of like how my mind thought of it because I, you know, it's really intense. It's uncomfortable. It's mm-hmm. not fun at really at all in the moment. Mm-hmm. Yes. But being with the uncomfortableness uh, of that type of transition and transformation, so important. Um, and you yeah. had, it sounds uh, like you had the, the tool, you had the support and the tools. I did. I did. Uh, my husband also was a Reiki master or is a Reiki master and did a tremendous amount of, energy work on me himself during that time period. Um, You know, it was something I had young kids. I had like a nine and a 10 year old. Mm. And I had, I think that in some ways that how, I mean, I had set it up as far as time wise, I had time to kind of be a little bit out of control, if you will. I had a good support team and because I had practiced magic and psychic things my whole life, my family wasn't like in the dark completely about what was happening to me. Um, Mm -hmm. But my kids actually kept me a little more stable because I remember at one point my daughter was talking to me and one of my spirits, Adam was speaking to me at the same time in my head and he was speaking with his own voice. Most of the time I ask my own spirits to kind of speak in my voice. I can still tell who it is, but it's less distracting. Um, Mm -hmm. But he was speaking in his own voice at the time, and my daughter was talking to me, and I was, like, standing right next to her, but I was looking away from her in the other direction of the kitchen because I was listening to him. And she said, you know, Mom, you're scaring me. And that was, like, this kind of, like, okay, Sally, you got to get this under control because you're not going to scare your kids with this. You have to find some, like I had a lot, I'm a very solid and, you know, um, well, centered, practical person. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm a very solid and kind of practical person. So those things I think helped me was like realizing like, whoa, if this is going to happen, I've got to find a way of dealing with this because I can't, I'm not going to cause my children anguish wondering what's happening to me. 
Um, mm-hmm. So that was helpful for me. What help? That's really important. I think that you it sounds it's a, you know a level of balance. Um, because sometimes people either, if they can, sometimes you can't cut it off or tune it, you know, turn it off, mm-hmm. so to speak. And then other times it can just that that dimension that that spirit room could just kind of take you away, and you don't yet have that 3D or Earth focus of groundedness, and then you, it's difficult to survive or manage that kind of opening. Yeah. So people misunderstand. Sometimes yeah. what is right figurative or what is happening uh, in the etheric and the astral, mm-hmm. they start living it's also, out. also, you kind of got to find, like you're talking about the balance. Like I remember that, you know, for me, this happened right after Halloween. Like it started November 1st. Mm-hmm. It went on until probably February that it was super intense. I remember going at the holidays to one of my you know, a regular party that I went to every year with people who were magical, you know, so it's not like they didn't, um, they had never seen anything strange. But I remember at one point I went to the bathroom and I was having a hard time leaving the bathroom and I was sitting in the bathroom and I was thinking like, oh my God, I can't go back out there. And I was mm-hmm. talking to one of my spirits about it and he's like, Sally, like, it's okay, you're going to need to leave the bathroom. You're going to have to, like, you're going to have to become, this is going to have to become normal for you. You're going to have to find your balance between listening to spirit, because I work primarily with beloved dead in my career, um, but I also work with elemental um, spirits, fairy beings. So I, you know, finding a balance and being normal and doing all these things was, for me, was a priority because probably because I was a mother and I felt like I really needed to have, you know, I needed to be solid. Mm-hmm. How do you find that balance and what, what do you, how do you check in to, to catch yourself from that balance? Because believe it or not, a lot of people, whether privately or on this podcast, we'll have people calling in and they somehow don't check themselves with the, it's like the experience, the archetypal experience becomes, you know, subsumes them, right? It overwhelms yeah. them. Any I think thoughts that because, on that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of the things that I really think is important, you know, I taught a class for um, empaths opening and protection for like the last 15 years. And um, I'm one of the things that I've found is that we got to, we have to start recognizing when we're overstimulated and that could be because you're having an opening. It is because you're having an opening. Mm -hmm. I believe we're living in a time of psychic evolution, which means this is normal, but we're all going through it to some extent, whether we want to or not. So what my, I always try to tell my clients and stuff, my awakening isn't going to be what your awakening is like because we're all different Mm -hmm. and we all have different things Mm -hmm. we came in to do. Um, and it, we all are on different levels, you know, like if you've never been working in this psychic field and you had an opening like mine, you probably would end up in a mental hospital. But yeah. for me who had that gradual build up because it was part of my life, it wasn't as drastic as it might sound to somebody else, even though it was still intense. Um, yeah. So I think we have to really know who we are. And we have to find out, like, I talk about the difference between anxiety and overstimulation. So mm-hmm. people have a tendency to use the word anxiety a lot. And mm-hmm. often what it is is overstimulation because as we are opening or awakening or going through psychic evolution, however you want to call it, um, we it's like having the volume dial turned up on our senses and we are taking in much more information. So if we compare it to like a child at an amusement park, if you take a child under the age of two to an amusement park and they never ride a ride or eat anything, but then a half an hour they'll be asleep and it's because they're overstimulated. They took in so much information that their body couldn't take it. Well, we've taught ourselves to push past that overstimulation part. Um, and if we start checking in at that spot, especially when we're going through openings, we're going to be able to take better care of ourselves. So ways to know that we're overstimulation, two of the most common that I think that people experience is through sight and sound. 
Um, I'm mm-hmm. a sound person when I'm overstimulated. Um, sounds will really bother me, like repetitive fans, the sound of somebody eating, um, sound of somebody breathing. You know, they can be these things that are normally wouldn't bother me, but if I'm overstimulated, those things become really intense. For some people, it's light. They will find that they become really light sensitive to like the overhead light, like almost like that verge of getting a mig- auric migraine, you know. Um, if we start paying attention to those parts of ourselves and say, okay, to be overstimulated means that I've taken in a lot of information that probably isn't mine. And I like to imagine it stuck to our aura, you know, like our aura is full. It's filled with like dust bunnies. And when that happens, if we do something to change that, like go take a bath, go for a walk in the woods, go meditate, go, you know, dance and change your space, you know, those things will help us. And it sounds crazy, but even when you're having a major opening, those things, I spent a lot of time in the shower when I was going through my opening and I would stand in the shower and I've really, um, you know, I have a pretty strong shower head, like the, the water pressure is really good. And I would sit a lot of, stand a lot of times and just let it like pound on my heart chakra because that was where I was feeling that overstimulation was in the feeling part of myself. You know, um, those things help us to check in with ourselves if we just start paying attention like, hey, you know, I I think that I'm a little irritated by sound and it doesn't happen all the time. When I am overstimulated, those things go hand in hand. I start calling myself anxious a little bit after that. Those are some of the things that I think help people is to like really check in with where they're at and also to understand that it is normal, that this is something that's happening to people who aren't even, you know, the people on your podcast are people who are looking for it. You know, they want this. A lot of them are. I'm sure you're seeing as well that there's a lot of people who this is happening to who didn't go looking for it at all. Are you still there? Can you hear me? Are you yeah. still there? Yeah. I, yeah, okay. yeah, I'm here. Sorry, it okay. just went blank for a while. So did you hear what I said or did I just lose oh, yeah, contact yeah, yeah. here? No, no, no. Okay. No, no, no. We were in contact, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I um, think there's, there is some of that kind of spontaneous openings or, you know, what is encoded within their, you know, DNA and, and yeah. energetic DNA that starts happening. Not a lot. I mean, like you said, most people do call this in, but I mm-hmm. we do get some people saying, you know, what does this mean? This is all of a sudden happening. Yeah. And I think there's probably, you know, to some degree there may be more of that. But it's, it's a bit, yeah. I think, a little more of an yeah, anomaly. They, gotta, they have um, to define themselves to you. Mm-hmm. They find their way to you after they've already been looking a little bit. Yeah, and that's why I'd like to talk about the coping tools. That yeah, sometimes I mean it's been even somebody calling in saying they oh I work in a corporation. All of a sudden, I you know my coworker had a migraine and I put my hand on their head or I massaged the back of the neck to try to help them and mm-hmm. all this heat came out and the migraine went away. And now I find I have that ability. What's going on? What you know? What's happening? Why yeah. am I like this? Am I so I think, you know, it is opening up more to those gifts, whether people are calling them in, and some people maybe it happens, to, you know, spontaneously, even even though it's not particularly maybe that many, uh, many people. Um, now, Sally, I want to touch on your book here, um, mm-hmm. Spirit Speaker, your most recent one. Yes. This whole idea of death and dying, um, is this, Literal and metaphorical? How would you well, it's really, the book was actually written for everyday people. I mm-hmm. um, I see a lot of people who aren't really into metaphysical things, but they still, you know, have spirit communication or like readings because they have stuff going on in their life. And I have built a reputation that has made my clientele pretty normal. Um, and so I wrote this book really for everybody, not just 
looking to open up as mediums, but for people who, you know, these are the most commonly asked questions or answers that my clients want to know about. They want to know what happens when we die. They want to know what happens in the process of dying. They want to know the ways that spirit communicates mm-hmm. with us. They want to know, um, you know, how to honor their dead or to build a better relationship with their loved ones in spirit. So written for really for everybody and mm-hmm. it's short and concise you know visible for people who aren't even on a spiritual path just have loved ones that they miss mm-hmm. so really about how to connect in it sounds like with with uh, yeah. the loved ones I do talk about that level, level. People step into when they're doing mediumship, and you know, I talk about the thinness that exists when people are actively dying, in which most people will have more experiences of spirit when someone is actively dying, either if, if it's yourself or if you're taking care of someone who's actively dying. So, there are things that help for people who are in that beginning stage of opening up to mediumship, but again, it wasn't really written for those people specifically. Mm-hmm. But you cover that. Um, one of the yeah. things that a lot of people ask um, that, that I find in the work that I do, and I'm, I'm sure you do as well, um, a lot of people want to know, how can I have a deeper connection with my loved one on the other side? Or even as they're passing, they're crossing mm-hmm. over or transitioning. Or once they have transitioned on the other side, some people say I feel their presence. Some people I I can't. Or how do I connect more with them? You know. Mm-hmm. Or any thought on that? Sure. I I really recommend that people set up a ancestor altar or shrine. So that can mm. be something that's as simple as top of a bookshelf or a window sill. They use that side to put some items, pictures, maybe memorabilia items like a piece of jewelry or a flag or whatever it is that you have that reminds you of your beloved dead. The beloved dead are family ancestors and tribes. So, you know, most often with ancestral shrines, they should be set up in a place where your family would gather. So if your family really gathered more in the kitchen, then you may want to put your ancestral shrine there. If you were more, you know, hanging out in the big family room, you want to put it there. And this is just the beginning of basically creating a a living relationship with our dead, an active relationship in which, you know, we speak to them regularly. We've made a space for them. And in many ways, Mm -hmm. these altars are very similar to going to a graveyard and to at the cemetery to visit your loved one's gravestone. But the problem is is that most of us don't live near all of our ancestral graves anymore. Right. We're all over the place. So, you know, at one point we lived where we could visit our loved one's graves anytime we wanted. We are probably in the same neighborhood. And mm-hmm. now, you know, at my closest graves are an hour and a half away. You know, I'm not going to go there regularly. Um and so an altar is a way of having that space of honoring that you can have inside mm-hmm. of your home. And one of my suggestions is to light a candle for about five minutes every day and sit with your altar and talk to your dead. And, you know, it's the same way, like, the really cool thing about graveyards is that when we enter a graveyard to visit our dead, we become solemn we become serious, we choose, I mean, we might still laugh if our relatives are goofy, um, Mm -hmm. some of mine are, um, but we are going to have a purpose for being there. You know, like we go to the graveyard, our purpose is to talk to them or to visit them. And we let go of a lot of the everyday stuff that we don't need to bring with ourselves into that space. And we should do the same thing when we light a candle and we sit with our beloved dead in our own home, or you can put that same kind of altar in your own backyard. You know, a lot of people have moved to 
you know, setting up gardens or benches to honor their dead as well, places where they can go and set aside, you know, that space and time to be in sacred relationship. So it sounds like it, that setting up of the, the time is really important and having that yeah. space where you can connect in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and, and people just, can do it. Like if your loved one really loves being in the car, then maybe you don't really have an altar, but maybe you have you know, something in your on your dashboard or something that reminds you of them. But you, Or maybe you have nothing that reminds them, but when you get in the car, you know that on your way to work is when you talk to your dad because he loved riding in the car. So, you know, you have that Ooh. conversation. You make that ritualistic time that is set aside. By doing that, we also give our dead the cue that that's where they should go to connect with us. And that will help us over time become more sensitive to feeling them. Mm. Okay, that, yeah. So where they, not just, well, where you, it sounds like where you would have the connection to them, but also where they would have the connection to you, yes. you know, uh, something that they like, they enjoy doing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the time, like, you know, like, seriously, like, that's why you put it in the kitchen. If your mom, you know, or grandma was somebody who cooked all the time, you, know, you might even want to put a wooden spoon on your altar because that's what reminds you of them. Uh, it's kind of, you know, I feel part of the reason I wrote this book is that I think that we lost so much of our so many of our traditions around death um, after World War II during the 50s and 60s when we were trying to homogenize what it meant to be modern people. And we used television as that model. So all of a sudden, you know, death became a wake and a funeral and two weeks of casseroles, and then, you know, that's it. We're supposed to be over it. Well, the problem is, mm-hmm. is that in, you know, homogenizing what we looked like through that television image of, you know, leave it to beaver or whatever, we left out the ancestral ways of honoring that were carried down by our, you know, immigrant relatives, okay, because that's the truth. Or for those of us who are, you know, who do have Native American, you might be from your indigenous um, relatives, but those traditions are very much woven into who we were, and we might not be able to go back and completely pull back that tradition because maybe we never really experienced it, but we can make new ones. You know, I know people who set up a space at their wedding for their loved one who died before they got married. You know, I actually had one time these people, mm-hmm. they set up their uncle was like their favorite person. So at their wedding, he had died of cancer shortly before that. And there was a race car theme between this family like they had like amateur racing or something so they took a picture of their uncle in his like suit that he wore when he was working on cars and they blew it up into like one of those life-size cardboard posters like you'd see like in a grocery store okay and they set it they set it up in a corner of their reception hall with a popcorn machine because he also was a huge fan of popcorn. So they, you know, that was his offering and his, like, hey, we made space for you. Wow. Love that. That's very Mm -hmm. personal, too. Very individual and personal. Yeah. Yeah, Do you think that you have a better chance of... of, Yeah, right. Do you think you have a better chance of that connection, the the more personal or individual it is, and or the more consistent? Yeah, I think that it's real about being authentic. You know, you don't have to do the big point if that's not who you are, but you got to be real. You got to be who you really are. You know, you got to kind of like open your heart to that communication, as I would say. And I just want to add one of the things I was going to add is that I've also had people who have done things like that and then had spirits come through and tell me they were at the wedding. So I've had a young woman who. Yeah, I had a young woman who her mom died right before she got married and she had set a plate for her mom. And her mom came through at a seance I was doing saying that, you know, that she'd been, that she was at the wedding and, you know, 
young woman was like, well, my mom had died first. I said, yeah, I know. She told me you have a space for her. But she also told me she was in a picture. And then the girl went kind of white because what had happened was the woman, the mom described it, that she was in a picture with her husband, her daughter who was getting married, and her other daughter. And the girl knew exactly what picture I was talking about because she had a picture of her and her dad and her sister, and there was an orb on the other side of her. So, you know, that was kind of like there is when we do those special things, sometimes, especially with modern technology, we catch a lot more with digital phones than we did beforehand. Yeah. There's a lot of ways to, they they love coming through electronics. Yes. It's a, it's a great grounder. All right, Sally, let us know anything you have going on and where people can find you. Um, this link will be in the description box as well of the sure. podcast. And um, I'm sure the book, all Amazon and all outlets. And um, Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so you can find me on sallycrow.com. Sallycrow.com. Okay. That's S-A-L-I. CROW.com, and I have my events listed there as well as I do share things like this media piece will go on there. So if you want to check back in often, I've got a lot that goes on. Okay, cool. And then you're also on Instagram. So people can I'm on Instagram, Facebook, too. and my website. Okay, and what are you, Sally Crow on Instagram also? Yes. Okay, cool. All right, Sally. Well, this was great. Thanks for sharing uh, some of your experience and insights. Really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye-bye. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, everyone. That was Sally Crow. The book is Spirit Speaker, A Medium's Guide to Death and Dying. Um, Looks very interesting, I must say. Looks like an interesting book. All right, gang, um, if you did not get your question answered or you wanted to share something, I'm here next week. Um, and we do always, if those of you that are new, we always have great guests on as well. You can also email me uh, questions that you have, topic suggestions, or any questions that you might have ahead of time. Uh, you can send it to awakeningspodcast at gmail.com or connect at soulplayground.life. Or if you are on the, um, either follow the podcast on YouTube, Awakenings with Michelle Mache podcast, or Tarot and, um, or Soul Insights and Tarot rather, then you can always put it in the comments. That's the best way, or on Instagram, the comments, because I do read the comments, I answer the comments back. So that's even better than emailing if you comment on Soul Insights and Tarot, uh, page, you know, or Awakenings with Michelle Mache podcast, if you put in the comments, hey, will you cover this or this topic or I have this question. Last week we had a few people um, send in questions. Um, so that's that's always great and I'm totally open to that. All right. I really love connecting with all of you and ways to connect further are in the podcast description Follow me on Instagram, connect with me, and let me know how you're doing, you know, whether you email it or put it in the comments, my socials of what you're doing in your life and what your focus is and how your soul's unfolding is going. I would love to hear from you. As always, Radiant Soul Lights, continue to shine your light, share your insights, and, of course, keep awake. Awakenings broadcast every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Pacific Time. Archive shows available on iTunes. For continued awakened conversations and insights, join the Awakenings group on Facebook. And check out Michelle's blog at soulplayground.com. And keep awake. Are you awake?